I'm Sabelle Negris, and we are um, Canada's original .ca registrar. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that story today, but before I do that, and I will also tell you about some of the technology trends that I am watching that I feel all consumers and businesses need to be watching as well. But before I do that today, I want to share with you and go back in time and reminisce a bit about how quickly technology has already changed in a really short time. So as I talk, and I'm going to share some personal experiences with you, I want you to start thinking about some of your own memories, okay? So I'm not that old, so my, kid thinks, my, my kids think I am, but um, I took shorthand in high school. Talk about a dead skill, right? I owned a manual typewriter, and in fact, I did all my university term papers on an electric typewriter. It was a Brother or a Smith Corona or something like that. And my first home computer was a $10,000 IBM because that's how much they cost back then. It ran on DOS. It used those five and a quarter inch floppy disks. And remember the dot matrix printers? You had to peel off those perforated strips off the sides. And my first office job, I had to send telexes on those big telex machines. This was before fax machines became popular and definitely not in the home, right? So I was watching a recent documentary on Steve Jobs, and they were saying that the iPhone has more computing power on it than all of NASA in 1969. Isn't that incredible? It completely blew me away. So things continue to change really quickly, and I realized that when I took my daughter, who's five, to summer camp this past year, and she was learning how to build her own website <laughs> at five. And I'm thinking, what's the next generation going to look like? So I'm sure every single one of you has your own personal experiences as to how technology has shifted in your own lives. And I know we've all watched advertising, for example, shift on billboards to radio and television, telling people to visit a company's or to go to a company's, um, phone, to phone a company. But then it became visit a .com website, right, to get more information. And then it became, about 10 years ago, visit a .ca website in Canada. And nowadays, it's maybe go to a company's Facebook page. And it's the .ca part that I was intimately involved in, so I thought I'd share a bit about that story with you today. So .ca. It was 1987. I was graduating from high school. But little did I know that my future business partner, a man by the name of John Demko, he founded .ca in 1987. Now, John was a true visionary. We call him lovingly the godfather of .ca. And he essentially wanted to preserve an online identity for all of us. And he did this and registered .ca for all of us Canadians, ran the registry for 13 years, and did it for free without charging any fee. He's been recognized as one of the pioneers of the Canadian Internet and a really nice man at that. So... With .ca, we, when I first met John, he was, um, I think he had registered about five, he was dealing with about 5,000 domain requests per month. And by the time I met him in 1999-2000, he couldn't handle the demand anymore. So there were a few of us that were put together at the University Industry Liaison Office, and that we started to transfer the technology and the 100,000 domain names to the Canadian Internet Registration Authority. And with that, we, we started to... Um, <clears throat> we transferred the technology to, the, to CIRA, and we thought, you know what? There's a, a business opportunity here. And we started web names. So with web names, we grew from 4 to 30 people in a matter of four months. We literally had people sleeping in sleeping bags in order to keep up with the demand of .ca. 
So today, it's been 11 years since web name started, and there are 1.8 million domain names in Canada of .ca, and web names continues to grow very quickly. But what's next, okay? What's in store for all of us in the future? And as we look into the future, there's a lot more change in technology that's coming. And as business owners and consumers, there's three main things that I feel that everybody needs to be watchful of. And number one is mobile or mobile technology. Number two is what I'm calling the personalization of the internet. And number three is security and um, privacy concerns around it. So first, let's talk about mobile. There are four billion mobile phones in use today out of seven billion people in the world. That's a huge ratio. And by the year 2014, there are going to be more people surfing the internet from mobile devices than from a desktop computer. So think about that. That's only two years away. Okay? Got to start thinking about this. 35% of Canadians today are surfing the internet from a mobile device even though they have a desktop computer at home. So what does this all mean? So by everybody shifting from the large screen desktop computers to a small screen mobile device, all of a sudden, not only do, do we have to make sure that our websites are mobile compliant, we have to make sure that our communication, our marketing practices, our selling practices have all to be mobile compliant as well. So, let's look at the growth of QR codes. I'm sure everybody's seen one of these by now. These quick response codes are essentially two-dimensional barcodes. That, they've been around since 1994. They were first developed by a company called Denso Wave. They were a subsidiary of Toyota. And these were used as delivery mechanisms to track auto parts. But because of the proliferation of mobile devices, and scanners on mobile devices, you can now scan these things and get a lot of information from them. And marketers are using these as a method to condense a lot of information for all of us. So, you can see it's used by so many companies. So, every major manufacturer, retailer, media, everybody's using it. So, you can also get coupons from these QR codes. And <clears throat> with coupons, think about how marketers are now sending the information to you. In the past, we had to carry coupon books or actual pieces of paper with us. Today, they're sending it to you by email or by text or through these QR codes. And I was thinking how powerful it is because there is now technology in Canada available that combines it with GPS technology. So remember the price wars, the gasoline price wars? All of a sudden, this is going to generate the new wave of price wars. You're sitting in a retail location. Your customer starts walking by, and they're about to go to a competition. You send them a deal. You bring them into your retail location instead. How powerful is that? So beyond these new marketing approaches using mobile, we have to start thinking about taking mobile payments as well. Because remember, by 2014, there are going to be people, everybody's going to be coming to your website from a mobile device instead of from a desktop computer. You have to be able to take money from them. And we all think governments are usually slow to adopt technologies, but think about even in Vancouver. You can pay for parking through your mobile device. I know I do every day. So businesses need to start adapting to mobile technologies two years away. Start thinking about it now. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the personalization of the Internet or the it's all about me era. Think about how we consume information today. We subscribe to RSS feeds in order to get news delivered to our desktop or to our mobile devices on topics that we want to hear about. We record TV programs to our digital video recorders 
and then we wipe out the commercials. We get information through our friends on Facebook, through our connections on LinkedIn, or through the people that we choose to follow on Twitter. We also make purchasing decisions based on the reviews of past customers, friends, and peers. So everything is moving towards the individual. And if you think about it, even in the domain industry, something new is happening. In the past, everybody was buying domain names for businesses. You can now buy domain names for personal branding reasons. So the .tel, .me, .name, all of those domain names are for the individual. And by January 2012, if you have $185,000 to spend, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers are going to start taking applications for well over 500 new domain extensions. So what does that mean? It means that businesses could get their own domain name. You could become your own domain registry. .ibm, .google, .microsoft maybe. Maybe there will be a .tedx. .john, .jean. That could happen. And basically, you and me, we have become the center of the universe in technology today. And that means that companies can't push advertising on us any longer. The individual is where the power is. And marketers are having to go to where the individuals are spending their time. And that's why there's a huge growth in social media marketing, because companies have to go to where the individuals are in order to engage the customers directly. They're also building customer review sites and engaging their customers and their fans to review products because they know it's their influence over their friends and peers to get them to buy more. Crowdsourcing is another means that marketers are using in order to not only part of the design process, but also crowdsourcing is used as part of product development these days. And one really great example that I enjoy, the Doritos commercial. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but they held a contest essentially to get their fans or their customers to produce a commercial. And once the commercial was produced, they got everybody to vote on the winner, and the winner got aired on Super Bowl. How powerful is it to get your customers to sell on your behalf? So basically, it's the businesses that can leverage off the influence of the individual and allow that at a very large scale, you are going to be the ones to succeed and overcome your competition. Now, with the personalization of internet, you also have to be very aware of all the security and privacy concerns that go along with it. So. In the past, we all thought about the bad guys coming to get our information. Right? It's the hackers, it's the bad guys. But nowadays, in the age of social media, we are choosing to put our own information out there, our very personal information, in fact. So think about Google. We type somebody's address into Google or Canada 411, and you can look up the street view. You can go and see what it looks like without even physically having to be there. You can also look up somebody's birth date on Facebook. You can also look up the names, pictures of their children, of their kids. And you know you're not supposed to do this, but I know many of you are still using those names as passwords. Right? We put everybody's resumes, we put our resumes on LinkedIn, and you can see the entire work history of somebody. You also can see where somebody went to school and, they, and the year that they graduated. And for those of you who tweet about this stuff, where you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and your favorite food, can you say identity theft? Right? It's pretty, 
crazy. So you need to be really aware of the information that you put out there. And I know there are privacy filters on each of these platforms, and there's privacy software out there, but there's no global solution that helps us monitor our privacy levels across all platforms. So I'm not saying I have the answer, but I'm thinking that challenges out there now. Anybody who can come up with this globally available solution that monitors somebody's privacy levels across every single platform, across every media, and help you adjust your privacy levels to the point that you like, you might have the killer app for the century. So, in summary, I just want to say that technology is going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to grow at a very fast pace. And let's embrace it. I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite quotes of all time, and it's by Mario Andretti. If everything seems under control, it's just not going fast enough. Thank you.